everyone, we are students of Southern Philippines Agribusiness and Marine Aquatic School of Technology. We are pursuing a Bachelor of Secondary Education major in English. We are a freshman students. So today, to widen your understanding about the instrumental music of famous musicians, we are going to share our knowledge by discussing the given topics about the instrumental music of famous musicians. But before that, let me introduce our learning objectives. At the end of the lesson, the students are expected to explain the importance of instrumental music, second, identify the various Henry of music, third, make a creative interpretation of the different musical Henry, fourth, translate sound or music into a new form and in a new context, fifth, discover some of the famous musicians. Thank you for that, Ms. Lamoste. Uh, good day, everyone. I am Mary Joy Colmo, and I'm going to discuss about the lesson one, the instrumental music from Baroque to classical arts. And I'm going to discuss uh, about the subtopic, what is instrumental and what is music. And now, instrumental, it is a musical composition or recording without any lyrics or without vocal sounds. There are many different types of instruments. Like for example, violin, trumpet, flute, uh, timpani, and harpsichord. So the main genres of the early Baroque instrumental music include the canzona. It is also known as a sonata. And canzona most frequently is violin and suit. So Baroque suit is a collection of Baroque dances often preceded by a prelude. Uh, Instrumental, it can exist in music notation after it is written by a composer. So in Baroque era, they follow the system of basso continuo. This refers to a continuous bass line with Im improvised harmonies in a Baroque period. So it is a piece that is performed by live, a single instrumentalist or a musical ensemble. When we say musical ensemble, this is a group group a musical group uh, the best example of this in the baroque period is trio sonata when we say musical ensemble this is a group group a musical group uh, the best example of this in the baroque period is trio sonata and now let's proceed to music music it can be a vocal sound or instrumental sound it is primarily or exclusively produced by musical instrument. When you say musical instrument, example for this is violin. Especially in the rise of mu instrumental music, the violin is very important. So, kapag nagpapatunog tayo ng violin, tas may sinusunod tayong nota, ang kakalabasan na tunog nito ay tinatawag nating music. So, it is express ideas and emotions in significant forms. Okay, for example, nakikinig tayo sa isang musical instrument or instrumental music. Uh, nararamdaman natin yung love, nos nos uh, nostalgic and hated or energetic. It is piecing and sound created by voice or instrument following some tonal structure in instruments. That, uh, we have timbre. Timbre is the refers to unique sound or quality of an instrument. Okay, let's move forward. What is Baroque and Classical art? First, Baroque. It is the first period in which instrumental music is as important as vocal. It is a heavily ornamented style of music that came out of the Renaissance. Third, the Baroque period lasted from 1600 until 1750 century. When we say Baroque, it means architectural style, okay? So, the second, Classical art. It is the artworks created during the classical period. It is the classical period spanned 1750 to 1820 century. It means art period. Thank you for that, Miss Lamoste. And now let us move forward. The following are the Baroque music originated in Italy. Number one, cantata. Describe a secular vocal piece of extended length, often in different sections and usually Italianate in style. Number two, concerto. Concerto, mostly understood as an instrumental composition written for one or more soloists accompanied by an orchestra or any other ensemble. Number three, sonata, was for one or more musical instrument almost always will continue. Number four, oratorio, a large scale musical composition on a sacred or semi sacred subject. 
for solo voices, chorus, and orchestra. Number five, opera. Composed in the Baroque era, the, in the period, in the artistic period, in the history of Europe. And now, let us move forward to the famous Baroque composers. Number one, Johann Pachelbel. Johann Pachelbel was a German composer, organist, and a teacher who brought the South German organ school to its peak and is one of the most important composers in the Baroque era. His, here are the examples of his work. Buckle Bell's Canon in D. Number two, Antonio Vivaldi. Antonio Vivaldi was a Venetian composer, virtuoso violinist, and an and empresario of the Baroque era and is regarded as one of the greatest composers in the Baroque era. Here are some of here are some of his compositions. The Four Seasons, the Concerto number no. 5, and the Anna Maria Concerto. Number 3, Johann Sebastian Bach. Johann Sebastian Bach was a German composer and musician of the late Baroque period and is regarded as one of the greatest composers in the history of Western music. Here are some of his co compositions. Number one, Bardenberg Concertos, Clavier, Mass in B minor. And, and now, let us move forward to the next reporter, Miss Angeline Polayo. Thank you for that. So, George Frederick Handel was a German-British Baroque composer and he was well known for his oratorios such as Messiah 1741, Water Music 1717, and Music for the Royal Fireworks 1749. And now, let's move forward to harpsichord music. So, George Frederick Handel, he made himself as a brilliant organist and harpsichord early on his career. He published uh, Sweets the Pieces for Lee Clavicen of 1720 and Sweet the Pieces of 1735. Okay, let's proceed to lesson two, the Romantic Period. The Romantic Period was a cultural movement that emerged in Europe during the 18th and 19th centuries. It was characterized by a focus of emotion, individualism, and the celebration of nature and the imagination. The Romantic movement had a significant impact on many areas of culture, including literature, arts, and music. The Romantic period had a profound impact on the development of Western classical music. It emphasized on individualism, expression, emotion, and imagination. It helped pave the way for the modernist movements of the 20th century and its legacies can still be heard in the music of contemporary composers. The Romantic music, it emphasizes on personal, emotional, expression, and freedom. Romantic music, it is a period of Western classical music that began in the late 18th and early 19th century. Let us first proceed to the first famous Romanticist composer, Carl Maria von Weber. Born on November 18, 1876 in Holstein, Germany. It is, he is a German composer and opera director during the transition from classical to romantic music. His famous composed, his famous composed artworks are Der Freshut, a popular German opera, Der Freshut, 1821, and also The Free Shooter, the Magical Marksman, and Euryante, 1823, and Oberon, on 1826. And we have an, another famous Romanticist composer. His name is Frederick, Frederick Chopin, born on March 1, 1810, in Zelazowa Walla, near Warsaw, Dutch on Warsaw, of Warsaw. French composer and pianist of the Romantic period. He is known for his solo pieces in piano and his piano concerti. Descriptive titles such as the Revolution Etude and the Minute Waltz. Robert Schumann was born on June 8, 1810, 
and he is a German romantic composer, Robert, or also known as Robert Alexander Schumann, renowned particularly for his piano, music, songs lighter, and orchestral music. Many of his best known piano pieces were written for his wife, and the name of his wife is Clara Schumann. Most characteristic work is introverted and tends to record precise moments and their moods. But another side of his complex personality is evident in the fortified approach and strongly rhythmic patterns of such works as the Kutkata and piano content. Now, let me tell you what is the cause of death of Robert Alexander Schumann. Robert Alexander's, Alexander Schumann had been mentally unstable all of his life, suffering periodic attacks of severe depression and nervous exhaustion. In 1854, after attempting suicide by drowning, he was sent to a private asylum when he died two and a half of years. Later, at the age of 46, though the exact cause is debated, asylum means form of protection which allows an individual to remain in the United States instead of being removed or deported to a country where he or she fears persecution or harm. He died on July 29, 1856 at the age of 46. Depression, we all know that depression is a mood of disorder that is marked by varying degrees of sadness, despair, and behaviors. So, napaka delicado talaga yung Depression no, kasi it can lead to the cause of death. Just like what Robert Schumann, uh, no, cause of death, he died because of a depression. So let's proceed to Franz Liszt. He is a Hungarian composer, born on October 22, 1811, at Rainy Hungary. British pianist and teacher of the Romantic period with a diverse body of work spanning more than six decades. Biro in mayon six decades, no? He is considered to be one of the most prolific, influential composer of his era and remains one of the most popular composers in modern concert piano repertoire. So, Franz Liszt is the one of the most popular composers in modern concert piano repertoire. And he died at July 31, 1886 at Berrieth, Germany at the age of 74. I don't know if what is the cause of death, but if you want to research it, you can browse it in a Google. So, let's proceed. Richard Weiner, or his full name is Wilhelm, Wilhelm Richard Weiner. He is a German composer, character director, polemicist, and conductor who is chiefly known for his operas. Unlike most opera composers, Weiner wrote both the libretto and the music for each of his stage works. He was born on May 22, 1813 at Lisbeck, Germany, and he was died on February 13, 1883, and cause of death is myocardial infarction. If you ask me if what is myocardial infarction, then according to my research, myocardial infarction is colloquially known for as a heart attack. It is caused by degrees or complete cessation of blood flow to a portion of the myocardium and it can be silent and go undetected or it could be a catastrophic event leading to hemodynamic deterioration and a sudden cause of death. Let me tell you this, just like my aunt, she died because of the myocardial infarction or let me say because of the heart attack. So we should treasure our uh, our life in every moment because our death is undetected and we all know that God only knows what our future is. Let's start first Robert Schumann or his full name is Robert Alexander Schumann and he was died on July 29, 1856 at the age of 46 and his cause of death is depression. Franz Liszt is a Hungarian composer and born on October 22, 1811 at Reading, Hungary and he was died on July 31, 1886, at Perth, Germany, at the age of 74. And Richard Weiner, or Wilhelm Richard Weiner, is a German composer, theater director, polemist, and conductor. He was born on May 22, 1813, at Leipzig, Germany, and he was died on February 13, 1883. And the cause of death is myocardial infarction, or let me say, a heart attack. Thank you for that, Miss Fernandez. So, Jack Offenbach. Born in June 20, 1819, in Cologne, Russia, he was a German-born French composer, cellist, and 
empresario or a conductor of an opera of the Romantic period. Jack is the most important writer of music in the 19th century. His original name was Jacob Eberst. His father changed their name to often back after marrying and taking a job as a cantor. He created a type of boylesque French comic opera known as Operating. Jack, the first person to compose operettas, which become one of the most characteristic artists, artistic product of the period. Example of Operetti, La Cove Blanche and La Dolces di Albe. He was the son a cantor at the Cologne Synagogue, Isaac Judah Ebers. His father was a Jewish who was an amateur violinist and folk singing as well as various instruments. Of Orphe Ox in Fierce, 1858, Orpheus in the Underworld. So Orpheus in the Underworld is a classic story of Orpheus concerns a renowned musician who is distraught over the death of his wife, Eurydice, that attempts to rescue her from the underworld, the place of the dead. This was often back first full length opera, a box office success. It is one of his performed operas and continues to be revived in the 21st century. Number seven, Johannes Brahams, born on May 7, 1833 in Hamburg, Germany. He was one of the Romantic period's most revered and popular composers. At a very young age, Grahams was forced to play the piano in dance halls to contribute to the family's income as they were so poor. So, he was the one who sustained his family's needs. He was also a German composer and pianist of the Romantic period. Grahams was a master of nearly every type classical of music. Examples, Wayne Jane Lyde, Dances Hungaras, Symphonies No. 1, and Lullaby or Cradle Song. He wrote symphonies, concerti, chamber music, piano works, and choral composition in more than 200 songs. The protagonist of the classical tradition of Joseph Hayden, Mozart, and Beethoven. Due to his feeling that he was posthumous musician, and also because his music is rooted in the structures and compositional techniques of the Baroque and classical masters. Thank you for that, Miss Felipe. And now, one of the mus musicians of the Romantic period is Piotr Ilyich Tchaikovsky. Some people call him Peter, but in Russian, this is said as Piotr Ilyich Tchaikovsky. He was born on May 7, 1840, and died on November 6, 1893. He wrote some of the most popular concert and theatrical music in the current classical rapid war, including this song. And that is what we call the Swan Lake. So Swan Lake was Tchaikovsky's first ballet music and one of the most popular ballet of all time. Tchaikovsky was the first musician composer whose music would make a lasting impression internationally. So here are some of the famous compositions of Tchaikovsky. First, we have The Swan Lake, The Nut Nut Crocker, 1812 Overture, Sleeping Beauty, Symphonic Number no. 6, Pathetic, Romeo and Juliet, Symphony Number no. 2, and lastly Piano, concert, piano, piano Concerto number one. So another musician of the Romantic period is Nikolai Rimsky Korsakov. He was born on March 18, 1844 in the quaint town of Tikbin. And everyone in his family either had an army or a naval background. He was not just the mighty handful most influential member, but were the greatest orchestrators at all time. And lastly, we have Richard Strauss. Richard Strauss was born on June 11, 1864 in Munich, Germany to a principal horn player in a music court orchestra. As a child, 
He studied violin and piano and composed his fir first piece at the age of six. His career were divided between conducting and composing until his death. Strauss composed several tone poems after being made shift conductor of Memorial Actor in Bruland. Richard Strauss died on 1949 in Garnis, Germany at the age of 85. His last work, The Four Last Songs, was written for voice and orchestra in 1948. He was the last giant of the class classical music. And that's all for the lesson two, the romantic period. Now let's proceed to the lesson three. Let's all welcome Miss Tigaldao. Thank you for that, Miss Migraso. Now let's proceed with the lesson three, which is the modern period. The modern period of music is also known as the 20th century period which encompasses a broad range of musical styles and movement that developed during the 90s and beyond. Now, we have here a brief definition about the modern period. The modern period is the breaking down of all traditional aesthetic conventions, thereby unleashing complete freedom in all aesthetic dimensions, including melody, rhythm, and chord progressions were highly influenced by the technological advancement of time as well as the cultural and social changes that were taking place. This basically means that during the modern period, music was redefined. In what way? In a way that this period put an emphasis on the departure of earlier classical music and they focused more on experimentation and innovation that's why genres like jazz, rock, and electronic music, of course. Now let's proceed with some of the most famous composers during the modern period. We have here the first one, which is Claude Debussy. Claude Debussy was born on August 22, 1862 in Saint Germain and Lay, France. He was the oldest of five children. He showed an early affinity of the piano and he began taking lessons at the age of seven. He had entered the Paris Conservatory at the age of 10. When he was 22 years old, he entered his cantata El Enfant Prodigue or the Prodigal Child in the Prix de Rome where he took the grand prize. His early masterpieces include Arites Obliques, Prelude et La Presse Méridon Fonny, and String Quartet. Overall, Debussy's music was a departure of the traditional forms and structure of classical music and his use of non-traditional scales and harmonies greatly influenced the development of 20th century music. He was also known for his collaborations with artists in other fields such as in poets and painters and in his interest in the Asian culture and music. Let's the second composer which is Arnold Schoenberg. He was born on September 13, 1874 in Vienna, Austria. An Australian-American composer that created new methods of musical composition inclu including a tonality, namely serialism, and the 12-tone row. One of the most influential teachers in the 20th century, among his most significant pupils were Alban Berg and Anton Webern. He was a self-taught musician. His music composition includes the Cartinage, OP4, five orchestral pieces, and the epochal period Lunaire. Overall, Schoenberg's music and ideas were controversial during his lifetime, and he faced significant criticism and even persecution for his atonal and serialist works. Nevertheless, his contribution to music and music theory continue to be studied and admired by scholars and musicians to this day. Now, let's proceed with the next reporter, Mr. Ruel Colmo. Thank you, Mr. Galdo. And my topics about Maurice Ravel and John Cage. And the first is Maurice Ravel. Who is Maurice Ravel? Maurice Ravel was born on March 7, 1875 in Chivor, France to a boss mother and Swiss father. His father lived in Switzerland and his mother lived in France of southwestern Europe. Ravel began taking course at the Paris Conservatory. What is Paris Conservatory? 
Paris Conservatoire is the is a prestigious music and dance school of France. He is known a composer, pianist, and conductor. He played pianos and he led orchestras or choir. He also composed music and one of Ravel's major works is known Vain for an Infante Defunct or in English Vain for a Dead Princess. It was composed on 1899. The key of this music is G major and the first performance of this music was on April 5, 1902 and this music is a solo piano. What is solo piano? Solo piano means unaccompanied with other instruments. So this music is an unaccompanied with other instruments. It's a solo piano. And the other Rebels major works are the String Quartet 1903, the Sonatine Circa 1904, the Meriors 1905, and the Gaspard de la Nuit 1908 and Ravel had later works these are called the Li Tambo de Caporin circa 1917 Rhapsody Espanol and Bolero 1917 Daphnis et Chloe 1912 and La Valse 1920 Maurice Ravel had many works but the mo most known of his work is the Bolero music the next is John Cage who is John Cage? John Cage was born on September 5, 1912 in Los Angeles, California. By 1939, he had begun to experiment with increasingly unorthodox instruments such as the prepared piano. What is prepared piano? Prepared piano is basically one that has various objects inserted in the strings to create sounds and uh, to create different sounds or different effects and he also experimented with tape recorders record players and radios among his works 433 is the most known and controversial composition of case the 433 is composed with three movements but the three movements is just an utterly silent on stage. That's why John Cage called it the sil the absence of intended sounds. That's why when William Max performed it in stage, he just set 33 seconds for the first movement and 2 minutes and 40 seconds of silence for the second movement and 1 minute and 20 seconds of silence for the third movement and that is 433 composition and also John Cage has uh, had lectures and writings and he composed it on 1961 and he has also in writings 67 to 72 uh, he composed it on 1973 and now let's move forward to the next reporter, Miss Shander Bidanya. And thank you for that, Mr. Well Colmo. Now I will discuss Philip Glass. Philip Glass was born on 1937 and grown up in Baltimore. He studied at University of Chicago. After that, he moved to Europe where he studied with legendary pedagogue Nadja Bolanjain. So there is some um, operas of Philip Glass, The Einstein on the Beach, Satyagraha, Akhenaten, and The Voyage. So first, Einstein on the Beach. Einstein on the Beach, 1976. It is an opera in four acts, four in symbol, chorus, and soloist with American designer Robert Wilson. First premiered by Philip Glass Ensemble, conducted by Michael Riesman at the Festival Avigon in Avigon, France on July 25, 1976. And next, the Satyagraha. Satyagraha is an opera in three acts for orchestra, 
chorus and solos. First premiered by Netherlands Opera and Artec Symphonies Orchestra, conducted by Christopher Keen at the Stans Converg in Rotterdam, in Netherlands, on September 15, 1980. And next, the Akhenaten. Akhenaten is an opera in three or in three acts for orchestra chorus and soloist first premiered at Wattenberg's Stand Theater conducted by Renes Russell Davis in Stuttgart, Germany on March 24, 1984. And the number four is The Voyage. Voyage, an opera with prologue and epilogue in three acts for orchestra, chorus, and soloist. First premiered at the Metropolitan Opera conducted by Bruce Ferdinand in New York, USA on October 12, 1992. In the past 25 years, Glass composed in more than 20 operas, large and small. Um, Glass composed more than 20 operas, large and small. He has written 10 symphonies, 2 piano concretos, and concretos for violin, piano, timpani, and saxophone quartered and orchestra. <laughs> he has written 15 operas, numerous chamber operas, and musical theater works, 14 symphonies, 12 concretos, 9 string quarters, and various other chamber music and many film scores. He also presented lecture, workshop, and solo keyboard performance around the world. <clears throat> it's, his musical style eventually dubbed as minimalist.